Yo, 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 it's your boy West the Tech here to bring you another one of my personal favorite tech tips to help you as an artist grow in your craft. Now, today we're gonna go over the best music distribution services for 2023, all right? So if you're a recording artist who's looking into signing up for a music distribution company this year, part of your New Year's resolution maybe, or if you're looking into making a change when it comes to your music distribution, then this is the perfect video for you because in this video, I'm gonna go over what I believe are the best music distribution companies moving forward as of 2023, all right? Now, one of the main reasons I, I made it a point to make this video is because a lot of music distribution companies have changed last year there has been some change in prices there have been some change in features for a lot of different music distribution companies so i figured it probably would be best to update you guys with my best recommendations moving forward when it comes to those distribution companies all right so that's pretty much what i'm going to be doing in this video now before I get started with my personal recommendations, I will let you know that there is no music distribution company that is perfect, all right? Every music distribution company has a pro and a con, all right? Well, so when I'm presenting these different music distribution companies to you, it's not that I choose one over the other. It really comes down to which one would you rather do? Which one would you rather pay for? Which one seems better or more reasonable to you in accordance to your money in accordance to how you like to do business, all right? But like I said, they all have pros and they all have cons. Now, as far as how I graded these music distribution companies on i pretty much just graded them on the three most important things that people look into when it comes to having a music distribution company or dealing with a music distribution company and those three things are number one the price obviously number two how much royalties that you actually get for your music how many streams that you actually get what percentage do you keep and thirdly youtube content id because youtube content id is a major factor when it comes to music and artists on you know when it just comes to music on youtube in general all right now if you don't know what youtube content id uh, go ahead and click on the link above all right in that video i will explain exactly what youtube content id is so you really know what it is i'll leave that link in the descriptions below as well but if you don't know what it is please you know watch that video and get used to it and get used to understanding what it is because that is basically the only way that your music is going to be protected on youtube all right so that is a big feature that every independent artist looks for when choosing a music distribution company so that's the third biggest factor that i look into or that i looked into when it comes to choosing the top music distribution companies of 2023 all right so to jump into my list as you see how this category look the first music distribution company that i'm gonna go over is distro kid all right although distro kid has been here for a long time and although distro kid hasn't really made any changes to their prices or anything like that i still believe that distro kid is one of the best music distribution companies all right i like to call distro kid old reliable you get what you pay for you know what you're getting they're not surprising you with anything it is what it is, all right? Now, when it comes to breaking down DistroKid, of course, we're gonna start with the pricing. The pricing for DistroKid is $19.99 yearly, but I'm gonna be real with you guys. The $19.99 plan on DistroKid is not worth it in my opinion, especially if you're an artist who really wants to be in control of how you release your music, all right? So I don't typically recommend the $19.99 plan, the $20 plan that they always advertise. That plan isn't really realistic if you're trying to be successful as an artist because there are a lot of things that you cannot do with that plan. The real plan that I think every artist should look into if you're choosing to get DistroKid is the $35.99 plan. And that's the Musical Plus plan, all right? That is the best plan that DistroKid has when it comes to being an independent artist. It's not as expensive as the professional or the label plan. You don't need that plan if you're a solo artist, all right? The reason this plan is better than the 1999 plan is because you, you will be able to choose your release dates, which you cannot do with the $20 plan. You'll be able to choose or to add pre-orders to your plan, which you also can't do. You'll be able to actually choose your iTunes pricing 
and you'll be able to customize your own ISRC codes. These four features are features that you will not get with the $20 plan with DistroKid, which is why I never recommend a $20 plan. I always go straight for the $35.99 plan or the $36 plan, all right? Now, I know some of you guys, you know, may be against paying, paying something annually, all right, an annual subscription. When you really look at it, you're really only looking at about $3 a month. So it's not super, super expensive when it comes to, you know, the annual fee. But where DistroKid does get expensive is when you're talking about the add-ons and the features and the other things that you could add on to it. The extras can make DistroKid a lot more expensive, which I can, which I'll go over a little bit later. All right. The next thing we're going to go over is, of course, how what's the percentage of the royalties that you keep? With DistroKid, you keep 100% of your royalties. This is probably the silver lining of DistroKid. This is the best part of DistroKid is that you keep all your royalties, all right? That's an amazing thing to be able to keep your royalties. Some distribution companies, you aren't able to do that or you have to pay a lot more to be able to do that, all right? So this is probably the highlight of DistroKid. Now, when it comes to the YouTube content ID, this is where DistroKid takes the L because with DistroKid, you actually have to pay to get your YouTube content ID per release. You actually have to pay $4.99, aka $5 per release to have YouTube content ID on each and every song. And you also have to pay $14.99, $15 for every album that you want to have YouTube content ID on. Now, in my opinion, this is something that you cannot, this is a feature that you cannot not have. You absolutely have to have YouTube content ID on your music if you want to take your music seriously as an independent artist or else people are going to be using your music on YouTube and you're not going to get paid for it. All right. So you have to have this and this is what makes DistroKid more expensive because you already got the $35.99 the $35 yearly. Then you're going to have to pay that $5 yearly youtube content fee for each song that you release and you have to pay 15 dollars yearly for each album you release so that number of the pricing can get very very expensive once you consider how much releases you actually have so before DistroKid, even with all of this extra stuff it still was cheaper than other distribution companies but now it has become one of the more expensive ones once you consider YouTube content ID, all right? YouTube content ID really makes the difference. Now, the thing about YouTube content ID, before I continue, all right, because this is across the board, when it comes to YouTube content ID, you're only keeping 80% of, of the royalties that you get with YouTube content ID, all right? That is across the board. I'm gonna save you the trouble of trying to do the research and finding a good company. You will not get 100% of your YouTube content ID. That's across the board. No matter what distribution company you go with, you're only gonna be able to keep 80%. I don't know if it's a YouTube thing, but whichever the case, it's the same across the board, all right? But once you add on that $5 extra per release a year and that $15 extra per album a year, plus the $35.99 yearly, DistroKid can add up significantly, all right? Again, and it's especially in comparison to the new plan prices, all right? DistroKid now, even though it's old reliable, it's still gonna make my list, but it will make my list on the third spot because of where it's at right now in pricing in comparison to the others, all right? With that being said, I'm gonna move on to my second recommendation when it comes to choosing a music distribution company moving forward 2023. My second option is going to be CD Baby, all right? Now, CD Baby was never one of my top options when it came to music distribution, but last year they changed their prices and their prices are much, much better now, all right? What makes CD Baby different from DistroKid is that CD Baby charges per release instead of annual. So you don't have to pay an annual fee, but you have to pay every time you release a song. And that's what made CD Baby bad, in my opinion, back then, because they used to charge a lot per release, especially when you're dealing with album. You had to pay $30 per album, and I believe it was $10 per, per, um, per single. And I believe they took a percentage out of it as well, so it was crazy. So once you added everything up, you're not getting 100%. You got to pay per release. If you're an artist who released a lot of music, that would have gotten very expensive very quickly. But they have since changed their prices and offer new plans. Now, I did a video on CD Baby's new prices 
at the time that they did it. If you haven't watched that video, you can click on the link above. That video also will be in the descriptions below if you want to check that video out later as well. All right. So I'm not going to go over all their plans. I'm just going to go over the, the best plan that I believe that they have, which is the plan that made them end up on this list. And that plan is actually just their per release plan, which you literally only have to pay five dollars per release of a single or album all right that price is amazing all right from going especially for the albums going from like thirty dollars to five dollars per album release is amazing all right so that is obviously better than distro kid when you're thinking about the aspect of per release because think about it like i told you before with distro kid you absolutely need youtube content id so you're gonna have to pay five dollars per release anyway with distro kid with cd baby however all you have to do is pay that five dollars per release because cd baby already includes youtube content id in their standard plan so you absolutely do not have to pay extra for youtube content id with cd baby i'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself but i just wanted to make that a point so once you actually compare that with distro kid and you actually look at the prices cd baby actually ends up being cheaper because you're paying five dollars for distro kids youtube content id per release anyway on top of that annual fee cd baby has no annual fee it's just five dollars per release and it includes the youtube content id so cd baby beats out distro kid price wise hands down all right but where cd baby loses to distro kid is the royalties because with cd baby you actually only keep 91 percent of your royalties and cd baby keeps nine percent now some of you guys may think nine percent you know that's fine they can take nine percent i don't I, I don't need the hundred percent because it's cheaper price wise yes that's true but always remember with percentages you don't have a set number it's not a fixed number percentages scale meaning that the more money you make the more money they make if you make a hundred dollars in your streams they're only going to take nine dollars most artists wouldn't have an issue with that but let's say you make ten thousand dollars on your stream now they're taking nine hundred dollars out of that ten thousand right so you're losing almost a grand because you decided to go with cd baby and and you were okay with them taking that nine percent and obviously if you make even more than that they're going to make even more than that so when you actually consider the percentage of the royalties and that you're not getting 100% of your money when it comes to streaming, that is where DistroKid beats out um, CD Baby. And that is probably the biggest con when it comes to CD Baby. No matter what plan you get with CD Baby, they're going to they're gonna take the 9% the out of your royalties. You're not getting 100% of your royalties. But when you're looking at the upfront price, it's cheaper. Like I told you before I even gave you these options, there's no perfect options. There's pros and cons to each one of these plans. And this is the con to CD Baby, all right? So to go over CD Baby again, it's $5 per release for a single or album, right? You only, you, um, they take 9% of your royalties and the YouTube content ID is included, so you don't have to pay extra for that. But with these new prices i must admit cd baby has to make it on the top of the list with this stroke kit because now in my opinion it is a really good plan to go with all right it's just a matter of what your preference from this point all right so cd baby is my second option all right in my opinion is it ranks number two on my list right now when it comes to distribution companies all right now the third option that i'm going to give you is the option that i believe is ranked at number one right now all right now i personally haven't used it yet i i haven't done it myself yet all right these prices are new that's not what their prices are before but in my opinion as of right now with their new prices i think they are the best music distribution plan when you're considering everything and that company is tunecore all right now if you watch any of my videos in the past you probably really came across my videos bashing TuneCore because TuneCore used to be super expensive. They were just like CD Baby on a per per release basis, but they were actually more than CD Baby. You had to pay much, much more, and they took a big and I believe they took a bigger percentage out of your royalties as well. So to CD uh, TuneCore back then, it just wasn't realistic as far as a good plan. I even did a video um, stating that TuneCore is robbing you. That's how bad their prices were back then but last year like cd baby they completely changed their prices and they completely 
came out with new prices and honestly their new prices are amazing all right so to jump into C, to jump into TuneCore, when it comes to them, you can still do the per release base like CD Baby, but if you're gonna do that, you might as well go with CD Baby because it's cheaper. What we're gonna be discussing with TuneCore is their annual fee. All right, they have an annual fee right now that is $14.99. It's a basic plan, but if you're being realistic, you're probably gonna want to go with their $29.99 plan. That is the most realistic plan that I would recommend if you're going with TuneCore. As you can see, it's $5 less than DistroKid, right? But it doesn't, but it also already includes YouTube Content ID, all right? And that's what makes it better than YouTube as far, or better than DistroKid as far as the annual because it's $5 less. You're comparing $35.99 with DistroKid to $29.99 in TuneCore. Then you got to add in the YouTube content ID with DistroKid of $5 per single. TuneCore is included, right? So TuneCore beats out DistroKid hands down when you include the YouTube content ID, all right? And like I said, the YouTube content ID is, the big, is a big factor as far as me choosing the recommendation because I believe it is extremely important moving forward, all right? So with TuneCore, like I said, the YouTube content ID is automatically included. It's only the $29.99 annually. Now, of course, if you don't want to do annual, which is which there's an argument that can be made out there, then go with CD Baby, all right? But if you want to do annual and you're okay with annual, TuneCore is actually better than DistroKid, currently speaking, as of 2023. Now, I haven't used TuneCore yet. I don't know. I don't know if there may be any secrets or anything behind closed doors about it, but as far as what they're showing me face value, it seems like the best one right now. And lastly, when it comes to their royalties, you keep 100% of your royalties just like DistroKid, all right? So it's basically the new DistroKid, all right? If I were to give it a name, I will call it the new DistroKid because it's 100% royalties just like DistroKid. It's $5 less per, per year versus DistroKid. And YouTube content ID is included, so you don't have to pay extra for that, all right? But like I said before, if you want to go the per release route, then CD Baby is your guy. Either way, these are the three options that I would recommend moving forward as far as best music distribution companies moving forward as of 2023, all right? Now, with all that being said, those being the three options, I did want to take a moment to discuss Ditto, all right? Ditto has been a music distribution company that I have recommended for a long time. All right. For a long time, it was right on the top of the list with DistroKid before the other two changed their prices. Ditto was straight to the point. It was annual. It has its royalties. Ditto, as far as face value with their plan, they are really, really good. There's nothing about them that looks bad when you're looking at their prices. You know, you get 100% of your royalties, all of that stuff. But I'm going to be real with you guys. I have been getting tons of and tons of people commenting on Ditto and the issues that they are having when it comes to getting their money, all right? I don't know what is actually going on with Ditto when it comes to that, but for some reason, a lot of artists aren't getting their payouts, they aren't getting their, their streaming money when they are requesting it and things like this. I don't know if this is something that has to do with us being in the US and Ditto being a UK company, or I don't know if maybe it's tax form related or what the case may be, but a lot of artists are having issues getting their money from Ditto when it's time for them to get their money. With that being said, that's a company that I can no longer recommend. Even though I haven't personally had that issue with it, I also have never used Ditto as well to have that issue with it. So with all that being said, Ditto is, some, is, is the company that has to be re removed from my list going forward because I'm just getting way too many complaints about that same issue. Now, whether it's true or false, I look at it this way. Where there's smoke, there's fire. There's something going on with Ditto, and I don't like what I'm hearing by a lot of the artists that are commenting on my videos. So I do not feel right recommending Ditto moving forward when it comes to music distribution because they, there's something going on there that is not good when it comes to us as artists, all right? So that may be why you haven't seen, why Ditto didn't make the list. Cause if you've seen my videos in the past, I've, I used to swear by Ditto just like I swore by DistroKid. But moving forward, I can no longer do that. I don't feel comfortable doing that, all right?
Now, if there's any other music distribution companies that you might be thinking of, of that I did not mention at all in this video, it's probably because it's not worth it. All right. I have researched a lot of different music distribution companies. All right. From United Masters, from Root Note to One RPM, you know, Fresh Tunes. I've I've done videos on a lot of them. I mean, you could literally go through my channel and find videos on pretty much every music distribution company. All of those other ones, they have some major cons and there's not much pros to them. So they're not even worth mentioning it, even though I already mentioned them. They're not even worth talking about in this video at all when it comes to the best music distribution companies moving forward as of 2023, all right? So to go back to the ones that I would recommend moving forward is DistroKid, CD Baby, and TuneCore, and I'm gonna leave it at that, all right? But if you have any questions in regards to these distribution companies or any other distribution companies, why something didn't make this, this list, please leave comments in the comment section below. I'll be glad to respond. I like to respond to comments. If you have any questions in regards to anything else, music industry related, music business wise, whatever the case may be, feel free to leave comments in the section below. I'm here to help you as an independent artist. Also, if you're looking on leaving that nine to five job and doing music full time at some point in your music career, please, I recommend you to check out my ebook. It's the 13 steps to jumpstart your music career. This book basically lays out all the steps that I took in order to get to the position that I am now of doing music full time for a living. I left my nine to five job years ago. I do music full time and I am enjoying it. And I want every artist to be able to enjoy that as well. I want every artist to wake up and only have to think about making music. All right. So if you want to know how to do that, definitely grab my ebook. All right. There'll be a link at the end of this video on how to grab it. It's also in the descriptions below. All right. But either way, that's pretty much it. I'm glad I could help and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.